hello 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 angel here welcome back to my channel if you've been here before hello if you're new hello hello it's been so long where have i been where have you been long time no see um disclaimer if you can hear the rain outside my window that's not surprising it's coming down like a good one um we're doing a bit of a catch-up is it August catch up? I'm not really sure. I can't remember the last time I posted. I know it was a wee while ago because I've been a busy, busy girl. Let's get into it. So I don't really know where to start, uh, pretty much as usual. And um, there's been so much that's been happening the last few weeks that I don't know where to start. So I'm going to try and start at the beginning. But you know me, it's a bumpy ride and I'm going to be jumping from place to place. OK, let's start with the decks. Let's let's do that. That sounds like the most sensible idea. This is the Numinous Tarot. I bought this second hand on my most favourite uh, second hand shop, edged in gold. Um, when I got it home and I saw the artwork, this deck jumped into my mind, which is the Oracle of Whispers, edged mine in blue and pink. This is a French deck, the guidebook is in French. <gasps> and these two sang beautifully together. It was like this harm harmonising going on. Can I say that? I don't know. I don't do technical musical terms, but you get the idea, right? They just sang together so, so well. Um, what did I use these decks for? Great question, thanks for asking. Uh, I used this for the Lion Hearts Instagram challenge, Heart of the Lion, I think it was called. Um, that was their challenge for August. If you haven't been on the Lion Hearts challenge, um, the Lion Hearts Instagram page, I'm going to link it in the description box because their content is absolutely fantastic. Excellent prompts, really great um, challenges for free free challenges for tarot and oracle uh, that they release every month uh, and it's a new theme every month which i think is fantastic so yes those were those um i bought three other decks into this combination um the first deck i bought in was the voyager tarot actually surprisingly um i don't know if i'm going to get all these in but i'm sure you've seen the voyager tarot before uh, i cut the edges off mine in august because the, the cards were too big and i even edged it in blues and greens to match the backs um let's just give you a quick flick of some of these cards uh, i'm sure you've seen this before can i pair these together i've got two other decks as well which i'm thinking are not gonna fit in frame um let's do this uh so yes yeah, so with this this combination of cards i started to really notice the rainbows and irises um and this this tarot challenge obviously lasted throughout the whole of august um but right at the beginning the, syn the synchronous look for rainbows and for irises was so so strong i felt like i was seeing them everywhere in all different oracle cards and you know uh, on television and there was like synchronicities you know happening here there and everywhere so much so that for instance um after doing one of these um one, after using a combination of these decks um i popped on a youtube video which i have like a playlist of old films black and white films um and the the film was like a black and white film from 1944 called the desirable lady i think it was called and um the male lead in the film um mentioned to the leading lady what do you expect to find at the end of the rainbow and it was nothing to do with rainbows it was nothing, the film was nothing to do with rainbows or anything like that it was, I think it was a murder mystery film, actually. And um, I was just like, my ears pricked up and I was like, what? What, what, what? Um, I've had other synchronicities sync as well this month with, with rainbows and with um, irises. Um, so much so that I've, I did a lot of artwork in the month of August, which I'm going to show you in a wee second. Um, I was speaking to my colleague a couple of days ago and, and they've adopted two cats and um, they want to uh, rename the cats. Um and I said, oh, what, what, what's the name of your cat then? And, uh, or your cats? And they said, oh, oh one of them's called Witch, because it's a black cat. I was like, okay, that's like, you know, bizarre. And uh, the other one's called Iris. And I was like, <laughs> okay then. So yeah, so um, a bit bizarre, but that's that's the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? These, uh, you know, you, you fall down these rabbit holes and, and that's the way it is. Um, another two decks I added this combination. This was the first one. This was the Sacred Mysteries Oracle um edge out the box in gold don't do this very much because it's um it sits on my, my bookshelf with my chakra books and this is this is a deck all about the sh uh, chakras as well and so i kind of forget i have it and i've had it for a long 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 time well i say that i've only been reading terror since 2020 but you know we're almost on five years four years can't even count um so there's like hindu deities in this one 
and I even pulled in this one, which was Wisdom from the Epics of Hind. These are the bags, which I think are beautiful. I purchased this one at the end of last year, and the guy put this one was really, really good. Now, I don't know anything about Hindu deities except for Kali. I, don't, I just thought I'd draw to this one this month and with this combination which I'm not going to show you because obviously you know I don't have the room on the desk which is a bit silly really um so enjoyed it it was such a good read out with these other three and as, as mentioned the guy picks really good as well so yes that or those were my first combination of decks which kind of opened the portal or the doorway to the irises and the rainbows okay let's move on to the next set of decks Okay, so the next selection of decks, we've got the Muse Tarot, which is mass market, and we've got the Star Seeker Oracle. Uh, I think I I think I re-edged these in August, don't quote me on that. Um, and these kind of like represent my inner landscape. Now, uh, in Dawn Michelle's Weavers, uh, Fellowship of the Weavers practice, we were doing, um, it was concentration on portals, and I'm already working with portals, which kind of felt really apt. Um I'm really sorry for the jumping about video. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos before, you might have seen this artwork that I've created. Um, this is my inner heroine in front of the portal, the next stage of my journey. Um, so I was already working with portal work. And so when the portal work came up in the Fellowship of the Weavers practice, it really felt obviously very, very relevant. And like I resonated with it really, really deeply. Anywho, so... Um, this is a deck that I've had a while, but it, it's suddenly started speaking to me of my inner landscape. I'm going to start flipping some cards while I'm talking. Um, because um, I came upon this like thought process in another video that um, this kind of reminds me of like, it makes me think of the hermit. Like there's these characters in their own landscape doing this like inner work, this um, self-reflection. Um which kind of made me think about my own inner landscape because that's what I feel I, I'm doing. I'm, you know, I'm like this hermit character that likes to be by themselves and, and really trying to do some deep self-reflection to kind of be able to move me on in life and to stop my self-sabotaging. So I'm trying to get into all the dusty corners of that um, attic, as it were, in my mind, uh, you know, to kind of um, cleanse it and free it from you know, whatever it is that's holding me back. Does that make sense? I hope so. <laughs> I feel like babbling as usual, as per usual. Um, so yes, yeah, so these are the decks anyway that I used for this portal work, which was totally relevant because of my inner heroin work that I'm doing. Um, and I'm going to bring this as well, because why not? Because, you know, um, it's all going to be a bit of a jumpy, jumpy video. Anyway, so I started bringing this, this, um, this, uh crystal is um silver obsidian and it totally reminds me of a portal because you can see like this portal here in the stone i don't know if you can see it very well there remind me of a portal anyway so i was carrying around with me the whole of um august and i was sleeping with under my pillow having some weird weird dreams but like interesting very um uh enlightening dreams and um i, I took it to work with me one day in my sports bra as you do forgot i had it Took my sports bra off to shower and a stone fell out and broke. So annoyed with myself. Annoyed is not the word. I was so angry at myself that I'd forgotten and it shattered and I was just so devastated because like I was having such a journey with this stone and it's it felt so like important to my I'm like I was like, you know, scrying with it and you know, really connecting with it and on a really good level. So um, I was naughty and I went back onto the seller's page where I purchased this one and I purchased the second one. So this one, unfortunately, is broken, but this is under my pillow all the time. I sleep with this one. And then I actually got my hands on this one, which is also gives me this portal vibe. I don't know if you can see that. And then I even found this stone uh, in August, which reminds me of a portal as well, which is now sitting on my desk. That was a, that was a complete like you know random uh, interlude <laughs> interlude is that the word I'm looking for I don't know <laughs> um, yeah so focusing been focusing a lot on portals irises rainbows are you confused yet <laughs> 
with this combination of decks I also pulled in the um, under the oak tarot I'm going to bring this in so you can see it uh, this is a deck that um, uh, that what's the word um, has been helping with my inner heroin work as well and I also you know, randomly bought in the Brian Froud's Fairy Oracle as well, because this is, I've been having a bit of a, you know, an, an um, experience with this one as well, this, um, the last few months in connection with this deck. So I've kind of been, you know, putting this one in as well. Um, let's pop that there. Let's see if I can flip a few cards for you so you can get the drift. Oh, Lordy Lord, it's all over the show, isn't it? As usual, it really is. I'm quiet. I'm taking a break. I'm giving you a breather so you can kind of catch up and understand what I'm talking about. So you can like land in the moment. <laughs> I'm totally, I'm totally winging it now. What's going on? I don't know. I'm getting confused where my cards are going. <laughs> so yeah. So this, I don't know. I, I was kind of. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to think back to how, you know, how it panned out during the month of August. And I, I just don't know. I just don't know. But um, the whole synchronicity with the rainbows and the portals and the uh, irises kind of led me to this thought process. I think I was thinking, I think I was looking, I was researching into rainbows and I was thinking about the rainbow bridge, you know, that, you know, the rainbow bridge that they speak about when animals pass over and they kind of, you know, spring across the rainbow bridge. And I was thinking about bridges and I was thinking about bridges are a way to kind of connect two things together. Um, and I was I kind of had this thought about this bridge in my mind. And this portal at the end. Um, and obviously, you know, what's the thing, you know, the what's behind me is, is what I've what I've been through and what's brought me to this moment. And what's in front of me is like the unknown, this portal, this next part of the journey. And um, when I was working with these three. Um, I started thinking about or well, from the messages I was getting from these cards I was thinking about how I can create the next part of my journey and how I can create that landscape and I don't need to be fearful of the unknown because it's it's you know it's all in my hands oh look this is very interesting isn't it not <laughs> me talking about this bridge going forward through this portal <laughs> well there you go um love the synchronicity of that and so I started thinking about my facets of self on this bridge in front of this portal um and so that's kind of where my september journey is taking me um i'm kind of thinking about my facets of self you know i've got my inner wolf and my red bonnet and my inner witch and my higher self and my inner child and my inner heroine um standing on this bridge in front of this portal waiting for the next step and i'm I, my my which is a bit of a spoiler for september but my my focus this month is like it feels like a team building exercise for my facets of self <laughs> we're going to be continuing on this journey all together you know all together um on this bridge uh through this portal so that's that's kind of where i came that, that's the kind of that's the kind of where, where my journey led me in august <sighs> holy moly have you switched off by now i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> So here we go. This is what I drew in my in my journal mid-August. Um, those facets of self standing patiently waiting to step through this portal. So we've got my inner witch, we've got my inner heroine, my inner red bonnet, my inner wolf, my inner child and my inner high priestess. So yeah, that's the next leg of the journey. Can I say that? I've said it. Done and dusted. Um, as mentioned, August saw me um, creating a lot of... Um, irises because i was just i was just following i was following the breadcrumbs and i was you know going down the rabbit holes this is a junk journal that i've created previously um which i, have ne I haven't used um now uh, you know i'm not uh, um i'm just i just i just play i just play uh this was an, a cereal box with, which i put glitter and stars into which moved about if you can see that probably not uh, anyway so yeah i just started you know randomly as you do um creating artwork on 
uh, Amazon Amazon paper basically because that, that's just what I do. Uh, I haven't finished this one. This is going to be this is obviously the Rainbow Bridge, and my facets of self are going to stand here. This is the portal which I haven't completed either, and the iris which I feel is really important. This obviously uh, rep uh, represents the rainbow uh, that I've been following this month. Uh, let's see what else I can show you here. Mm, I've created a couple of other. Sorry, bear with me. I created a couple of other irises. Here we go. I painted. I think this was my first iris I painted. Um, <laughs> here's the second one, which I was really, really proud of. Actually, I, I made this with um, this backing with. Uh, is it called a jelly plate? I just like threw some paint on it, and um, I got some stencils, and and then I painted the iris over the finished result. Um, bear with, bear with. Oh, that was another one that I did with a jelly plate, which I actually really like. Sorry, bear with me. Um, <laughs> where are your irises? Come along, don't be shy. Where are you? Here we go. Here's another one. I really like this one actually with the. I added um, pen to this one as well to show the veins of the flower. And I think I've got one more, which I think is at the back somewhere. There we go. So, yes. That's another jelly plate um, that I did. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, this is my plan. To, I'm using this journal for September. I'm also going to say that this paper... Um, wait, let me back up again. Uh, I think a, a month or two ago, I spray painted my... I changed out my colours in my apartment, which I think was the 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 lead in to following my rainbow um and I, I did that in pastel colors which i haven't previously done i haven't felt you know um what's the word brave enough to let loose the color in my life um and a couple of months ago i decided to do that anyway so i was spraying outside on the balcony and um the paper that was that i'd used i left outside a couple of weeks um which i think i've seen corrigan the crone do uh, they left out papers in the elements to kind of suck up the energy of the elements and so this paper was like sitting on my balcony for quite a few um, um, days sucking up the sunshine and I just added some jelly plate uh, printing onto it and I'm going to uh, um, add this into this journal which is for September and for the next leg of my journey which I'm not going to go into this video <gasps> in the end anywho uh, one more set of decks so many apologies. I did say this was going to be a jumpy video, did I not? I think I did. Okay, the next set of decks that we're looking at is the decks I use for Virgo season. Started at the end of August. This is the Fifth Spirit Tarot, I want to say. It's called. I love this deck. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And this deck is another French deck. These are the backs I'm not a big fan of. This is the actual deck. Uh, Akashi Oracle. Memories of the Akashi records i think it's called something like that uh french, the guidebook is in french obviously i've had such a bizarre experience with these this combination such a bizarre com uh, such a bizarre experience so i first picked these up in at the start of virgo season i was going to do a virgo reading and i think that was like the 20th the 21st 22nd of august something like that anyway either way it doesn't matter so I found a super duper fantastic spread from Dark Fay Tarot. I'm going to link their um, channel in the description boxes because they always put out some really fantastic spreads for the new moon, full moon readings, that kind of thing. Uh, change of seasons. Anyway, um, yeah, so I got these two out and this was the first card I pulled. I have never used this deck before. Um, I think I got this at Christmas or birthday last year. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I just felt really cool to use it. This was the first card out. Uh, Synchronicities. And this has got plant life or plant or herbs uh, included in the um, in the cards. And this is the blue iris. And this is what I thought spotted first. I was like, is that an iris? I was like, what? And of course, I've already had the synchronicities all throughout August. And I was like, is that, is that an iris? And I was like, I'm, I think it is. Um, and this little this little figure with the wings. Um, I'm going to go a bit more into that in a second as well. Um and so I started looking up in the guidebook, I translated it from French, and the guidebook reads, subtle signs, uh, be observant and look at, the, look at the details. And the blue iris is a message to be conveyed to someone, or on a spiritual level, it symbolises subtle messages from our guides. And obviously, you know, this was not part of the spread that I was doing. 
uh, by Dark Fate Arrow. But once I pulled this card, I was like, okay, this is too much of a synchronicity with the whole Iris thing going on for the whole of August. And now it feels like there's a message coming through for somebody else. Now, I don't do readings for anybody else. There's nobody particularly in my life that knows I do tarot. Um, I'm not accustomed to getting messages through for other people. And I was thinking, well, who would this message be for then? And I pulled another card asking that question. Well, who is this? Who is the message for? And I pulled this card. And this, this the key word is actually success. But this character. And this says uh, La Camellia Blanc which I don't know what that translates to in English because I can't remember and I didn't look it up in my, in my journal. But I have a friend who I call Camilla Lala. Her name isn't Camilla Lala, it's something else. It's, Cam it's Camilla actually, her name's Camilla. And this kind of, I, my eyes just fell on this. And this reminds me of her dad. And I've, I haven't met her dad. Her dad passed away about a year and a half ago. And I was thinking, okay, now I do ancestral work. So, you know, I'm kind of, I've, I've gotten comfortable with getting messages through from ancestors. But this kind of felt like something else and something that I've never worked, never done before. So I kind of continued doing, you know, with, the, with continue with this reading and, and asking what the message was. And there's been a lot going on in my friend's life recently, or the last two years, basically. And the message that came through was that, well, I'm not going to say what the message was, but there was an important message that came through. But I don't know how to convey that message to them. I don't want to upset my friend. So if I would love, I would love, 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 love to have your um, advice on this. Because I don't want to say that a message has come up in my cards because it all sounds very woo-woo. I don't want to upset her about her dad. But I do feel... Um, Oh, I, I do feel that this message needs to be conveyed to her in some way. So if you've got some kind of fantastic suggestion, you know, for you guys and girls that do readings for other people, how do I give this message to this person that's not been asked for by them? Does that make sense? Because I don't want to overstep the mark and I don't really know how to handle it. So please let me know because I've kind of been putting other things in place to help my friend and to kind of... Um, show them some love in other ways but I don't know I just feel like I need to give this message to my friend so yeah any advice would be really really appreciated let's flip some cards that was a long story and I'm sorry that I didn't flip the cards whilst telling you another good pairing so so been enjoying it um however I have been a little bit hesitant um of bringing these two together because I feel nervous that I'm not I haven't so far given the message to my friend which I feel it needs to be done um but 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 the readings I have done with this deck or decks have been has been really, really good so yeah have you ever had that before have you ever had a message come through for somebody else I've had that once actually for my sister I feel but it wasn't like um it wasn't a message from like somebody that's passed away and i I really strongly feel like that that was the message that was coming through. It felt like too much of a synchronicity that the person, the, the figure in the card looked like um, my friend's dad who's passed away and the name on the card like kind of matched what I call my friend. Does that make sense? I'm totally babbling. I'm going to stop and um, we're going to move along, I think. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm still using these two, obviously, this month. Spoiler alert. These are going to appear in my September video um decks i'm using this month um so yeah but uh, i love it love it love it love it and i think i came upon this pairing in in another video that i was making or something i don't remember but i just came upon it just by totally by accident and i was like oh, i want to use those decks together so yeah it might be a bit of a strange um a strange combination for virgo season but these to me feel like virgo season i can't explain it do we need to explain it no, you know, it just, it, it makes sense to me. <laughs> so follow my rainbow, rainbow for August. Where did my rainbow lead me? It led me to this beauty. Look at this beauty. She is gorgeous. Check out the hair on this beauty. I've been looking at this lovely, lovely doll for two months, maybe something like that. And I was thinking, 
I'm almost 45. I do not need a doll. I do not need a doll. And then uh, middle of August, I was just like, oh. you know, if I saw on my channel, I would swear. Just, you know, dagnam it. I'm just going to buy it because, you know, why not? Why not? I'm just going to do me and I'm going to, you know, let... I'm going to let go of self-imposed limitations and I'm just going to do what makes me happy and I'm going to follow the rainbow. And following my rainbow has led me to rainbow idols. <laughs> so this kind of leads me to what I've been doing for the month of August. Yeah, I've kind of been... I've been kind of creating a, a doll's house, <laughs> like from scratch. So I'm kind of letting my creativity, you know, spill out. Um... And so I've been like making, you know, miniature beds and miniature chairs and miniature flowers and miniature tables and all the good stuff. And um, I've also been on um, a second hand hunt for some rainbow high dolls. So I kind of feel that that's this is going to be like a new. Possibly a new channel that comes about following my rainbow. So not only am I feeding myself, I'm also following my rainbow. Um, you know, I've got on a bit, you know, on the dolls and their adventures I'm going to say and my making of um my handmade uh doll miniature doll's house basically so yeah that's what's been taking my time actually I've been really really enjoying creating all this stuff for the dolls um I'm still waiting on quite a few well I say quite a few I've got about four dolls that I've found second hand which are being posted to me so they're t due to turn up but I thought she was absolutely beautiful now I purchased her brand new uh, she came with a stand and she came with um, some slime, which I'm not going to use. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about dolls because it might not be your cup of tea. Um, but if I do launch another channel or I do have an Instagram channel or something like that, uh, another Instagram account, I might link it in the description box further forward in the future. Uh, at the minute, it's just a new hobby and it's, you know, been really filling my cup and feeding my soul. <laughs> Enough said. Let's move along. Let's take a look at the bits and pieces I've made already. Two thrifted dolls here. Uh, the one on the right was the first one that I purchased. Um, let's move the planter out the way first. I made that. Uh, moving this doll, the seat that they're sitting on, I made out of cardboard and an old duvet cover that's seen better days. Then we have the mat under the doll's feet. That was also made by me with macrame rope. There we have a little stool made out of a toilet roll and an old fluffy sock. The bed was made out of a shoebox. Um, all the bedding was made out of scraps of material I had in my arts and crafts stash. All the cushions, the headboard, the yeah, the shelving unit was also made out of, out of cardboard, painted in acrylics, as was the clothing rail. So I'm basically gathering all the bits I'm making in one area until the doll's house is completely created. So here we have uh, another doll that I thrifted, a little table there which I made out of a cheese, a cheese box wrapped in macrame uh, rope. And we've got a little dish made out of a button, uh, got an, a pretend incense stick there. We've got some candles on a tray which I made out of cardboard. Uh, the house coat on the doll I made myself, the cushions I sewed myself out of scraps of material. And we're moving finally to my latest uh, make which is a little seating area, also made out of cardboard. And then we have the plates made out of buttons. So you might have seen some of the items when I did the bit of a scan round um, of the area that I've got my dolls on. But here are some of the items I've been making. Um, this, for instance, is a rug, which I made out of uh, old Amazon packaging paper. And about 10 years ago, I used to do macrame and I had some rope left over in my craft stash. So I just got that out, popped some glue on and um, yeah created this spiral rug which I really really like um this is an old button out of my crafting stash I had quite a few so I'm making these into plates for the doll's house um this is a scrap scrapbooking paper and I just gessoed white um the actual um edge of the button so it looks like a plate uh, this I'm really proud of this is a plant that I made um I got the inspiration from a channel which I think is called the froggy stuff I'm going to link it in the description box excellent excellent resource if you're looking to create dolls houses or dolls miniatures and things like that um these were cocktail sticks this was a um prit stick cap the cap of um, some glue which i covered and painted in acrylic paint and this was um usual a4 paper i just colored it in green and some darker greens and then um 
cut it and rolled it and made it into this little spider plant which I think is so so cute I'm so impressed with that um this was an old fluffy sock which I had which I've made into several fluffy pillows for the doll's house you know getting my sewing skills out which are non-existent let's be frank and um I'm creating a little art studio in my doll's house and so I made some um brushes this used to be a I want to say knob is that the wrong word <laughs> I'm always hesitant to use the word knob on this channel, but I've got to. <laughs> this was a knob from a roller blind. Um, and these are actually the little sticks that are left over once you've burnt um, incense uh, sticks, which I just coloured with a bit of silver pen and some brown to make it look like um, paintbrushes. Aren't they cool? I think they're really cool. I'm most impressed. I'm actually quite, I'm quite impressed with myself, actually, I've got to say. So yes, those are just some of the items. Um, I'm hesitant in buying or purchasing like plasticky bits uh, for dolls' houses. I, I, the the enjoyment for me is in making um, the items myself and letting my my creative juices flow. Let's talk about new decks I bought in in the month of August. This was a second hand find. This is the Cosmic Cycles Tarot Limited Edition. Um, here's the back. I found this on eBay. I was a little bit worried it was a bootleg copy, but when I did my I did my research um, and properly like looked into it, and um, yeah, I'm really happy actually, really happy with the um, the deck. These are the bags. I think they're gorgeous. Uh, it came edged out of the box in this purple colour, and it's on like this rose petal um, cardstock, which kind of gets a bit stuck. It's that 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 cardstock that likes to stick together. It likes to hug and squeeze the other the other cards, but you know it's all good. I haven't used this deck so far. Um, with all the stuff that's been going on in August, I just haven't had the time to test it out. And the art style really reminds me of like, it kind of gives me a bit of a Disney vibe. I don't know, it's a bit bizarre. But I just really like it. It feels quite streamlined and modern. And um, it feels quite young, but you know, I'm young at heart, so it's all good. So I don't know when I'm going to work with this one. Um, I don't have any plans to work with it in September because of the other plans that I've got going on in September which I'm going to go into in my September Dex Intentions video so yeah oopsie uh, sorry apologies so yeah this one's going to be appearing sooner or later within my practice um so that was that one I did bring a second deck in in, in August I know I'm only supposed to bring one in but I did bring two in so let's take a look at that one as well so the second deck was the Land of the Giants Oracle. This is a low Scarabeo deck, mass market. Um, yeah, I felt my I know it sounds really daft, but I felt my September practice calling in in August. I know it, it feels really bizarre, and um, I created a new altar, maybe at the, in the middle of August for this new work that's coming with my facets of self. I felt it was like the next leg of my journey. And this deck felt really relevant. Um, as mentioned, I'm going to go more into that in my September Dex Intentions. So keep an eye out for that video. It's coming extremely, extremely soon. I've been pulling one card pretty much a day. I've been really enjoying this. Really enjoying it. And I think I'm going to pair it with um, a couple of other decks, which I'm, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to divulge just now. So keep an eye out for September Dex Intentions. Uh, yeah. Other things that I've got purchased in uh, August, I ended up purchasing this dot, this book, Pagan Portals, Iris, Goddess of Rainbows, The Messenger of the Gods. Do you see where my rainbows and iris has led me? It led me to the goddess Iris. I'm not unfamiliar with Iris. Um, this goddess came up right at the beginning of my practice when I was having a bit of um, an experience with, with some deity energy. Um, and so I just purchased this book to kind of, you know, have a bit of a read through and... Um, see if it resonated so we shall see just at the moment I'm following my rainbow um yeah and allowing it to fill my cup and feed my soul so it's kind of it all kind of feels like it's all hand in hand you know it kind of we, we're it's on the same path I feel so yes I do believe that was it for the month of August that was enough goodness me I've talked for a, a, a long long time how about you? What have you been up to in August? Let me know. Where's your practice leading you in September? I would love to know that. Um, are you feeling drawn to anything? Are you following breadcrumbs yourself? Did you fall down any rabbit holes yourself in August? 
let me know in the comment section i'd love to know otherwise i'm going to thank you so much for watching keep an eye out for september decks and intentions coming very soon and um yeah i wish you a lovely morning afternoon evening wherever you are and hope to see you in the next video doodly -doo.